Hey friends, how's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and today I'm going to show you how to play the Tyler Childers song, Lady May. This is an awesome song from his album, Purgatory. I totally recommend the album if you've never heard Tyler Childers before. He's very similar to Sturgill Simpson and Jason Isbell, a great sort of modern outlaw country artist, as I would sort of classify it, right? But anyway, I'm going to show you how to do it. This is a really fun one, because you have this cool melodic riff, you know, the... But that's combined with these chords, right? We're gonna have a C, and we're gonna have an F, and I play this sort of like three finger F a lot of the time, and we have a walk up from the A minor to the G over B to the C. But what you do is you combine those two things to the extent that you feel comfortable, and that sounds like. You saw me play it in the intro, so I'm not going to play it again, but this is a great one to play. Lots of cool uh, opportunity for uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs and practicing those. And I'll show you how to do those, how to practice those, how to learn those. And I'll also show you a sort of simplified versions if you don't want to mess with the hammer-ons or pull-off or any of that yet, or you're having trouble with it. So I'll show all of that to you, so stick around. And as always, uh, with my lessons now, I am having this sort of very nice handcrafted by me, a PDF chord sheet. I have three fantastic pages here that give you everything you need to know to play this song. You can find it at playsongnotes.com. It's my own personal website. And um, uh, for those who support me on Patreon, you get the um, direct download to this file if you want the nicely uh, formatted one they're waiting for you. So check that out, playsongnotes.com. It's my website and it's, uh, it's all there waiting for you. Okay, so let's get into this lesson, all right? Okay, so first up, uh, we're gonna do capo on the third fret. This is how Tyler Childers plays it. So we're gonna put it on uh, third fret capo. That way we can play along with him. So just a note there. After that, we're gonna look at the chords first, okay? So this song, uh, the chords are gonna be basically, we're gonna have a C, okay? Now the C typically in this song, I'm only gonna play the middle four strings, okay? So third, second, open first. That's the C. Now the F, you know, a full F looks like this, but with this song, what I really do is I really lean into this F where I'm just doing a three finger F that's on the second, third, and fourth string. So uh, third fret, second fret, first fret. Okay, on the fourth string, third string, second string. Now if you want to do a full F, you can. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll do this like this uh, middle, middle four string F where it's third, third, second, first, and I'll use my thumb to reach around here. Okay, this is a kind of an advanced thing and you're not, if you know, if you're learning this uh, for the first time, it might be tricky. So don't feel pressured to sort of pick it up out of the gate. But then what I'll do is sort of, you know, I'll play the thickest five strings. So first, third, third, second, first. Okay, so that's how you play that. Uh, but again, just stick with this, this three finger version um, and you'll be really good if you want to keep things simple. You'll also need an A minor. Open second, second, first on the middle four strings, okay? can leave the thinnest string open if you want. But again, with this song, I had this weird uh, sort of preference where I only like to play the middle four strings. So you got the C, you got the F. If you play the three string F, it sounds like that. If you do a four string F, it sounds like that, okay? And you have the A minor. Now, well, the last one is a G over B. And what that is, is basically like, think of a G, okay? But when we say over B, what we mean is that the bass note is gonna be a B. And the bass note in the uh, G major chord in the open position is this note right here, second fret on the fifth string, okay? So basically we're gonna do second fret, open, open, open. So middle four strings only. Okay, so again we have a C, we have an F, we have an A minor, and we have this G over B, okay? So it's a nice little pocket there where you're in those middle four strings, it's a nice little challenge to sort of not play the thinnest string and um, we're not playing the thickest string either. Unless you want to do the full string F, you totally can if you want to, okay? So those are the chords we're going to start with. Now, uh, I, want to, I wanted to start with those, sort of get those in your sort of um, your arsenal here. And as I dive into this intro riff, uh, I want you to keep those chords in mind because they are really the, the tonal foundation of that intro riff, okay? So now let's look at that riff. So again, uh, the main version sounds like this, right? Okay, 
there's a lot going on there. I'm going to sort of start things off simple, and I'm going to add on the techniques and the, the complexity to sort of take you to that full version if you want it, right? Now, how I would sort of uh, explain approaching this riff, I'm starting with the simplest possible way, is by using this tab, right, which is going to show you the main melody notes of the riff. And then I'm also going to show you this tab, which is going to show you the main like chords that are sort of suggested by the riff, okay? Now, um, I recommend learning these sort of one at a time, but what's gonna happen is, as you get more familiar and comfortable with both, you're gonna be able to just, like subtly combine them in a way that is gonna just sort of naturally ooze out of you playing the song, right? So um, let's look at these one at a time and I'll sort of show you what you need here. So the first one is gonna be this sort of simplified, uh, just melody notes, right? Now there's no hammer-ons and no pull-offs. And this might sound a bit, you know, simple compared to the Tyler Childers uh, melody you hear, but here's what it sounds like. Okay, so I just played through it there. And if you want, you can count it, right? So, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, it's hard for me to count and play at the same time like that, but I did include those counting marks there, so you understand just the rough distribution of the notes. Now, what I'll say about this is I don't recommend necessarily playing this just with like one finger, right? You could do that, right? But ultimately, it's gonna sort of get you to a very satisfying place a lot quicker if you realize that, hey, you're just gonna sort of think of your left hand um, as resting in these chord shapes as you're playing these riff, right? So, um, you know, you know, you have that C and then you have the F. And mainly you're just going between the C and the F. And these are very similar shapes um, as I've showed you here. All you're doing is moving your, your ring finger and your middle finger. But if you sort of um, have your left hand in the shape of the chord that matches the timing and then play the melody notes as per this tab, it'll just be a lot easier because all these notes are coming from these chord shapes. For example, the first few notes are So what's happening there is I'm starting on a C, right, and then playing the sort of fourth string on a C, my middle finger's on it, then I'm letting off my middle finger and I'm going to the ring finger on the third fret of the fifth string, right, so those are the first three notes. And then we're just going to walk right back up. So what I recommend is this, if you're just taking this slow, is just practice that one phrase by itself. Notice how little movement is happening over here, right? Okay, that's going to be the first phrase. And the next phrase we could do might be... This is a good one, right? Look how similar these are. I'm playing the note that my left ring finger's on, and I'm sort of doing a open, and then a second fret with my middle finger. And then all, all I'm doing for this next part of the phrase is moving these fingers toward the floor, one string. Okay, so that's the second phrase. So those first two phrases then, So that's the sort of first part, uh, first half. Then over here to the second half, we're going back to the F. This is probably gonna be the trickiest part, I think. And even as you make it more complicated, this is the trickiest part, but basically. So we're starting on this F, right? Middle finger note, second fret, right? Middle finger up, and then move that middle finger to the second fret of the fourth string, and then go to the root of the C, right? Fifth string, third fret, so. But um, practice that. Two, three, four, one. One more time. Okay, so, and that's that last phrase. And then we're gonna do this walk up on the fifth string from open to second fret to third fret, okay? 
and then end it with a okay open fourth string second fret fourth string open third string okay so let me do the whole thing again I'll do it slow So those are the notes. And again, as you go through that, just understand where uh, the chord shapes your left hand should be in. And it, then it becomes a lot less to worry about with your left hand, okay? So once we have that, I wanna talk about some of the hammer-ons and pull-offs you can use to sort of make this a bit more um, realistic per Tyler Childers, okay? So with the hammer-ons and pull-offs, basically, here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this C, and there's really this middle finger note. What we want to do is get good at hammering our middle finger down from open, you know, not touching anything to the second fret of where the C, you know, no normally has its middle finger, right? So again, here in the tab, you see this, uh, this D string is, there's the zero and then you have the H2. So that, that means it's hammer on from zero to two as far as the fret. So zero is open and two is the second fret. So this is open and this is the second fret. So it's one pluck with my right hand, but by bringing this down forcefully, it's gonna create a second note, right? So first note, second note, first note, second note. So you can also practice it by strumming the whole C chord with your middle finger up and then bringing it down, right? So normally you'll have it a bit sooner. Okay, that's, uh, that's the sort of hammer on. And you can do the same thing on this F, on this three string F. A good, good way to practice it, if you're just new to this, is just worry about the string you're hammering. So I share that with you that because there's lots of hammer-ons in this tab if you want to play it like Tyler Childers. And the second thing I'll show you is the sort of pull-off technique, which is very similar. Here we're basically going to... We're going to start off with that note, say that middle finger note. We're going to pull our finger off and sort of pull it off in a jagged way. It almost makes the string... Well, it does. It makes the string make a sound. So here's the second fret note, and we're going to pull off and lab the zero, the open thing ring, right? And this is a lot trickier, I find. I find that it's not a matter of just lifting your finger off. You almost want to like grip the string and pull it towards the floor. And then sort of like kind of forcefully come off of it. Um, it's a bit trickier to do. But you can do it in the F too. So that's like a pure pull-off. Now you could do a hammer-on pull-off together. So we could go from open to second to open. So here it is on the fourth string. And here it is in the third string. Okay, so that's a hammer-on and a pull-off. Now I'm gonna show you some places you can use those if you wanna do the sort of intro riff with the nuance. The first one is this first couple notes. We're gonna pull off from second to zero and then go to this that C root note, right? And then we're gonna walk back up and hammer on that second fret again. So in that first phrase, we're going from second pull off to open, third, 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 open, second, and a hammer on to second that is, so. Okay, that's the first little one. The next, and all these are optional, by the way. If you can't do them, don't worry about it, right? The next one is this. So we're gonna hammer on from open to second and then pull off from second to open. Then we're gonna go to this F, okay? Now I play the F again like this, where I'll have my, my uh, thumb here. And then we're gonna hammer on on the third string from open to second, okay? Just repeat it. 
Okay, that's that, that uh, hammer on on the F and then back to the C hammer on. Okay, now this is the trickiest part right here, this F. So here, play the root of the F on the fourth string and then hammer on from open to second and then just pluck the fourth, the third string open, so. And then here we're gonna, on the fourth string, we're gonna do open, second, open, but it's gonna be a hammer on and pull off. And then we're gonna land with our third, um, third fret of the fifth string. Okay, so that's the sort of end of the F into the C. All right, and then we have that standard just C hammer on the fourth string. Then we have this walk up from A, hammer on on the fifth string from open to second for the G over B, and then to C. And then you just end with that common sort of C hammer on. So the most common one here is this C hammer on of this middle finger on the fourth string, second fret. That's gonna be your most common one, right? So here it is. So here's this sort of intro tab, and I'm just gonna to try to play the notes here. I'm not gonna do any of the fill strum that I'll, I'll sort of show you in a minute here, right? But. Now, what I'll say is you want to take it to the next level with like tighter shoulders is you want to sort of keep your right hand kind of casually almost down, down, up, 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 down. And you want to combine that with the melody itself. So once you have the basic melody, then sort of do that, right? And the whole point of this is it's saying it's okay to hit extra notes that are sort of matching the chord that your left hand is in, right? So for a little case study there, check out this. From the A minor to the D over B to the C. So I'm going up bass, down, up, bass, down, up, bass, down, up. Okay, that's sort of an example of the sort of constant strumming. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. That my right hand will, will be in. So here's that sort of um, intro riff again as I play it, um, and just check it out. All right, so there you have it. Now, with that, you'll have what you need to play the entire song. So the song itself is gonna look like this if we look at the sort of verse, for example. We're just gonna be in all those chords that we just showed you. You could play the exact sort of intro sequence and just sing over it, right? Or you could just do a casual strumming. So we could do a down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, right? So, I'm a stone's throw from the mill In a good walk to the river When my working day so swim away. Right? So we could sing the same thing, but then play the exact riff under it. Now that's gonna be a lot tougher to play that riff and sing at the same time. But what you can do is just sort of do the casual strumming and add in those hammer-ons and pull-offs as you see fit, right? So I'm a stone throw from the mill in a good walk to the river. My working day is over. So um, that's your sort of options there, and you could just do simple strumming if you want to. Now the chorus uses the same chord, just different order, right? So we're gonna do that walk up to start with. Now I ain't the sharpest chisel that your hands have ever held. Darling, I could love you well to the rose called on high. Right, so again, same chord shapes. You kind of have to listen to uh, his version a lot. This is a real, um, he has a free style of singing with this, and he'll stay on certain chords for a long time and just hang out before the next line starts, right? But that's all up to you. But again, you can head over to the website, playsongnotes.com, and get the tab for this, uh, and the printout, really, of all the chords and the lyrics together, and use everything I showed you and have this really handy 
uh, to keep with you forever as you learn guitar and inevitably come back to this song. So I uh, hope this was helpful for you. Uh, this has been David Potts again. Check out the website, playsongnotes.com. And thank you very much for watching this lesson. Let me know what other Tyler Childers songs you want to hear lessons for. And in the meantime, uh, have a good one. If you want to play your guitar, you got to pick it up and it's not going to play itself. So bye-bye, my friends. Take care. Thank you.